Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about how to select a graduate program here. So you could also use this for undergrad, but today we're gonna to specifically talk about how you go selecting a program for graduate school uh, around quantitative finance. So the first step here, step one, is going to be set your goal, right? Start to come up with in your mind, right? You're not gonna know the nitty gritty bits about the industry. Maybe you watch my channel, maybe you watch other channels, you start to get a little bit of understanding. But what do you really want to do? Like, what is your end dream goal? And I say this as someone that thinks, starts thinking about, you know, like, do you want to do math and stats? Do you want to be a computer all day programming? Do you want to be a quant trader where you specialize more on like looking at, you know, data and information or charts or tools and then making trades? Or do you want to be someone that's doing just like a ton of computer science programming and working in optimization? Or do you want to be someone that's just focused on the financial theory side of it? Or are you someone that wants to focus on like the data science side of it? Do you want a fast, super, you know, crazy moving schedule and you work a lot of hours? Or do you want a better work-life balance and you want something that's a little bit slower and more reasonable? Um, start to think about these things. What do you want in a job? Write them down on a piece of paper here. So I've got a piece of paper. Uh, write them down on a piece of paper, set up your goal first before you do anything. After you've set up your goal, which is step one, step two is gonna be researching and looking for programs here. So if you wanna go into quant programs here, you can look at my website. I'll pitch my own site here. Um, you can go into the quant finance rankings here. You can go and look, of course, last year or this year, I guess, 2022, uh, Carnegie Mellon and University of Michigan were the top rated programs for a variety of reasons. And if you scroll down to, I have a few recommendations of programs I just think are decent programs, not because I had like a bunch of extra information, but because I did the homework and the research and went and looked at a lot of programs. And you know, like Baruch, Columbia, Imperial College, North Carolina State, NYU Tandon and Rutgers all came up as, you know, programs I would consider and look for. So doing your research is going to be step two. You can use my website. If you want a broader perspective on this, go to Quantnet. They have a lot of students and reviews and discussions around programs and courses. I would be very careful though, because a lot of the reviews are written by not, nothing more than students. So imagine a student's taking a program, they get a bad grade, maybe they don't fit the program, something happens and they're disgruntled and they're very upset and emotional and they might write some really negative review or uh, the program you know, might fit them well, but it might not fit you well. Try to do your research and figure out what the program specializes in, which is the whole purpose of um, <laughs> my channel and talking about you know, the quant rankings I did. But if you click 2022 rankings here on Quantnet, you can scroll through and look at these programs. Again, I don't think the rankings mean a whole lot, like number one and number four or number seven, how different are they? Um, I don't think it adds much value. Depends what you think is more important. But again, this is a great starting point if you're looking at quantitative finance masters. Um, again, you can look through all the programs here. You know, you can say, okay, let's say uh, University of Chicago is number 10. You can click on it and open it. It gives you a little bit of a description. It gives you reviews from different students. It gives you rankings. So it gives you some different perspectives and backgrounds. I would read through these and look for things that you're wanting to do that align with your goal. So if you want to do something that's, I don't know, let's say stats related and quantitative finance related, and you think you want to go into like risk management and you read all about a program and all they care about is C++ and, you know, I don't know, all this programming optimization and coding and all this, it's going to be like a quant dev position. That's not going to be what you're looking for. You're like, I want to program. I like to program, but it's not my core focus in life. I really want to do math and stats and focus on like financial theory. You're going to want to go into risk management per se. And then what you'd want to do is then look through these reviews and see what the students say about the programs. Uh, also look at the curriculums, try to figure out, you know, what courses you want to take, what electives are available. So what electives is extremely important because it gives you an opportunity to really focus in you know, some sort of area that you want to do. Uh, many of these programs have like similar base classes, some not so much, but some do. And you can look th those and then try to figure out what you want to do on the elective side. So Quantnet is a good spot for looking for quantitative finance masters. It gives you kind of a breakdown. Now that kind of goes in line with what I've talked a lot about on the channel, but many students ask me, Dimitri, what degree would you get? And I say, I would get a master's in statistics and people want to know why. So let me give you a few tidbits here on why, and then we'll go on to the other steps. Uh, I would go and get a stats master's for a variety of reasons. One, if you want to work in risk management, so not quant dev, not trading, those sorts of things. But if you want to do things that are very heavy model development focused, so again, some of the research side here as well, but 
you know, risk management, model development, those sorts of things kind of go hand in hand. You're going to need statistics and stats, I think is an amazing degree, but there aren't really a lot of master's degrees in stats. And I found out there's not a lot of undergrads in stats. So something to think about is when selecting a program, it might be a little challenging, figure out where you want to go. But a stats master's is great because you can work in quantitative finance on the risk management side. I love hiring stats masters because they have all the skills and the knowledge they need. Um, I love to have a little bit of finance knowledge in there with them as well, but often they don't. And I can teach that on the job, right? Teaching finance is far easier than teaching uh, math and stats. So that's something to think about. But also as a backup plan, if you get, you know, a year through your program or a year and a half, two years, whatever, and you finish out your master's and you're like, man, I did a bunch of additional research and I spent all this money and I don't really like quantitative finance. I really like, you know, technology. I really like building statistical models, but I want to do it for, I don't know, the pharmaceutical industry. Having that statistics master's allows you to kind of pivot and do things in different industries while all using the same sort of skill sets in quant finance. Now, the downside of it is you're not going to get a financial slant. And again, when hiring, a lot of companies like to see, you know, oh, you've taken some finance classes. Maybe you can kind of work that in with a master's in stats. Maybe you can find some electives to take. Um, just a few things to kind of think about. But how would you go selecting these? You go to usnews.com forward slash best graduate schools. You can just Google best graduate schools or graduate school rankings and find this website. I'll link it below as well. You'll notice here it says programs with an arrow, click that, and then you can scroll down to anything you want. Um, there's all kinds of things, but again, they're very general topics. You're not going to find quant finance in here, which is why I would use like QuantNet or my website. But you can go into the sciences and you can hit statistics. And then it's going to say school name optional. So don't type anything in there. Click search. And in this section, you can find the best statistics masters and PhD programs, which is what graduate school is. And number one is, you know, Stanford, University of California, Berkeley, Harvard, University of Chicago, Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, Duke, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and the list goes on. And not surprisingly, if you look at the top quant programs on the quant list, um, a lot of them such as, you know, Berkeley, University of Chicago, Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, University of Michigan, all align statistically with the stats programs uh, in the quantitative finance programs here. So, Again, schools that are really good at analytics typically are good at analytics across the board. So for example, the program that's great in statistics might be excellent in biostatistics, might be excellent in quantitative finance, and might be excellent in like computer science. So top programs, top names, top schools. Now, again, you don't need to go to like, oh, it must be, you know, in the top 10 or the top 20. I like to go and do the application process. So step three now is, you know, you're gonna actually look at where you're going to be applying here and you're gonna to apply to these programs. I would look through a few programs that you think are like, you know, the dream school. It's the school you would absolutely love to go to. And if you got into that program, it'd be like amazing, but the credentials for getting in are probably super high and your credentials might be kind of close, but you know, you're a little far off. You don't really think you're gonna get in. Apply to like one, one dream school. They just throw that out there. Uh, then go back through the rankings and look at the programs that you think are like good schools, solid programs. Uh, you meet a lot of the requirements. You're looking like at GRE scores. You're looking at, you know, GPA, uh, undergraduate degrees, minimum requirements, those sorts of things. And it looks like I would get into these programs or it'd be, you know, I'm in the running for these and start to look through these programs and you might apply to a variety of them. So you might go through like a list like this and say, okay, you know, Dimitri Bianco is a huge Michigan fan here. So he applies to the University of Michigan and maybe, you know, I don't know. I want something that's a little bit easier to get into. You know, North Carolina State is an excellent program in statistics. I know because I've worked with someone from there, uh, but they're not as well known as well heard of in general, but it's still going to be fairly competitive because they're ranked 11. So maybe I'll apply there. And then you might apply to a few backup schools. So maybe you go down these lists and you try to figure out like, all right, you know, Boston University is 41. So, you know, being in Boston might be a great thing career-wise. There's a lot of jobs. Uh, there's a bunch of smart people. There's a bunch of other industries there besides finance, which finance isn't that big there, but there are some finance companies in Boston. So maybe I'd pick, you know, apply to Boston University. And again, I would be doing my research on these programs, trying to see, okay, you know, I don't want to live in California. So I'm going to skip, you know, Santa Barbara, Riverside, Santa Cruz here. And maybe I'm going to go to, you know, University of Virginia. Like maybe that would be an excellent program as well. And so you'd select these out and then go in and do the research, right? Look at the programs, try to find reviews on them. Look at the curriculum, see if the classes line up with what you're expecting. 
Uh, do your homework, do your research. Again, go on LinkedIn to its little secret here. Go on LinkedIn when you're setting your goals and look at different profiles and figure out, you know, different job titles and search them and then look at people's profiles and see what degrees do they have? Do they have a master in statistics? Um, do they have, you know, a master's in quantitative finance or mathematical finance? Do they have an MBA? Do they have a business degree? Like what degrees do they have in that goal setting process? Because it will give you an idea of what you need to do to reach that goal. So, so far we have one, set our goal. Two, we've done a ton of research on all these programs. We've made all these lists. We've narrowed it down. And then three is going to be applications. So going through the applications, getting the letter of recommendations and applying for the jobs. I know it's time consuming. It takes a bunch of time. I would include like taking GREs and exams, anything else you need to do all as part of the application process. And then finally, step four is going to be sorting through um, your acceptance letters. So you might apply to 10 programs. You might get, you know, excellent tr like feedback and traction to get eight acceptance, or you might get, you know, one or two acceptance. But again, going through and doing your research, making sure the programs line up with you, then you'll have a solid understanding of where you want to go and why. And then once you get the acceptance letters here, so now they want you to, uh, you can sort these out and kind of select, you know, which program you want to go to. And you'll already know why it'll be much easier to make this decision at this point as well. So anyways, that's how I would go about looking at programs, selecting programs. Again, US News, the rankings aren't gonna be perfect. I know there are weaknesses of these rankings. I have complained about all the rankings online constantly, but it gives you a good starting point and it gives you kind of a ballpark of like well-known programs are gonna be at the top. And once you get to like 100 plus programs or whatever rankings, uh, they're probably not gonna be very well-known programs. So just things to consider. Anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.